Now, to believe it or not, uh, Trevor Palmer's real point. Are you a true Christian? Listen to this uh, US apologist first, okay? Because Trevor's going to quote him here. Just bear those words in mind. Are you a true Christian? A real Christian? A Bible-believing Christian? Are you real? on this planet. First, it is important to recognize that the vast majority of people in the United States identify as Christians of some kind. Thank to be you, exact, Colin. the number is 69%. 69, dudes! They said it all. <sighs> and that adds up to a whopping 176 million people. At first glance, this seems to be very promising. As Christians, we want our country Looking to be converted good. to Christ. Looking we want as good. many people as possible to know the Lord. The problem is that recognizing that someone has placed the moniker of Christian on themselves is generally a really bad way of discerning whether or not that person is actually a Christian. Time See, someone on the Christian. outside looking in would just take their word for it. Someone says, hey, I'm a Christian, and you say, cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. The same way if someone told a Christian that they were a Buddhist, the Christian wouldn't question if they were truly a Buddhist. They would just take them at their word. But Christians like to pick who is in the in-group and who is genuinely a Christian. Oh, Just say this, is a person who calls himself a Christian really saved? I don't know. What does a person who calls himself a Christian believe? Churches in America, we have a lot of really nice brick buildings on finely manicured lawns. Just because someone says they're of the church or they're Christian, does it make it so? The majority of people who call themselves Christians, even evangelicals, simply do not have the basic beliefs a Christian ought to have in order to back up that statement. At this point, Trevor chimes in and says, Even evangelicals can be wrong? Whoa! Comes back to the old. Why I call myself what I do? Not that kind of Christian. See, you've got to be the right kind to be saved. Obviously, according to some, I'm not the right kind. So I'm not saved. I'll tell you another one I love here as well. This idea, you're either, as I've just said, you're either a Christian or you're not. But these fundamentalists split it down even further. You're a particular type of Christian in order to be a true Christian. First, they'll add the word true, as if they could be a false Christian. Well, they say, they'll say they can be. And then sometimes they go even further and they add another title. You're a Bible-believing Christian. Now this is the one that I find the most confusing. So in order to be a Christian, you have to believe the Bible. Not trust in the things that it says, not just read the book and understand about Christians of old, Jews of old, traditions of old, some parts of history, some parts of myth, some parts of legend, but you have to actually believe the Bible. Every word in that book has to be spoken by God and absolute truth. If you don't do that, then to them, you are not only not a Christian, you're not a true Christian, and you're not a Bible-believing Christian. Those people just confuse me, I'll tell you. So you can see, in conclusion here, having shared these clips and shared some comments on them from Trevor Palmer's video, fundamentalist Christians, or shall we say, Bible-believing Christians, 
actually believe that everybody else is wrong. Everybody else doesn't really believe. They're wrong. Worse still, they're not only wrong, they're not really saved at all. They haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ because they haven't taken on board the whole of the infallible Bible at the same time. And unfortunately, when you do try and debate with them, I guess it's inevitable in these things, some of them do get really quite nasty because they seem to see it as their job to defend the inerrant Holy Bible from cover to cover. That you're a fundamentalist or not, when you get into that debate with someone from another religion, or even an unspecified theist like myself, or even an atheist, how can you possibly argue your case from what you don't know in origin? Now the fundamentalists do a little bit better of a job, because they do read parts of the Bible, but they also wholly ignore other parts. That's why they never know the from my Bible back and forth, but it's history and origin. After all, I did spend 12 years.